Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So I got a question that was put to me. Stefan, what's your opinion on the oversaturation of the dev market due to yearly graduated software engineers? And self-taught, do you think there is still a demand for software engineers? Good question. I hear it all the time. Here's the actual answer based on my understanding of the whole market. Anyway, let's just jump into it. All right, short answer is don't worry about the software engineering market. There's not going to be a shortage. What's happening now, and I'm recording this October 1st. Wow, it's October 1st, 2024. So what's happening now is we're having, anecdotally, I haven't looked at the latest data, but what we're happening is a downturn in the market in terms of hiring developers because of two things. Number one, during the pandemic, pandemic, excuse me, during the lockdowns, a lot of tech companies were just hiring like crazy. They were doing these, um, what's the term they used? They were doing what some people would call defensive hires, hiring anybody they could get their hands on in terms of coding, etc., because they were worried that they wouldn't be able to get their hands on the talent. So they went through this crazy phase of hiring like crazy, and now the dust has settled and they realize that they overhired and now they're just trimming the fat. They are adjusting for reality. This is normal. I've seen this cycle several times before. So another aspect of this is during this frenzied hiring phase, they were hiring people who weren't really that competent. So a lot of the uh, boot camp graduates, a lot of people who did just a bunch of courses on Udemy and had copied the projects and then presented those in their portfolios, they were so worried about missing out on talent, they hired all these people. So what's happened is they've, they've calmed down, they've gotten, gotten off the sauce, and are no longer drunk. And when you're not drunk, you don't make stupid decisions. So they had, uh, the, they had the publicly traded companies and all the tech companies, they had coder beer goggles on, coder beer goggles. They were so desperate, uh, like a drunk person, they thought, oh, that, 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 that coder looks amazing. When you're drunk, they look amazing. And then the next day you go, oof, I was drunk. So that's what's happening right now. They're just uh, sobering up and uh, they're realizing that they hired a bunch of people who weren't qualified to begin with. And that's why you hear a lot of people are saying they're not hiring entry-level devs anymore. They weren't entry-level devs. They were devs in, who were still learning. They didn't really know what they were doing. You have to understand something. When you're hiring uh, developers, when you're hiring any talent, really, I'm telling you this from experience, it's expensive to bring on new talent. It costs the employer money, not just in terms of your salary, but in terms of training you up so that you are productive. And I've cited articles and studies in other videos where the hiring managers, the HR people say, the number two thing they look for when they're hiring tech people is interpersonal skills, professionalism, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, you gotta be trained in that. You gotta be trained in that. So this whole downturn that we're seeing, if it's there, first, it's, it's not really affecting the people who have skill and talent. It's affecting the people who probably needed a little bit more training before they got a job in the first place. But if you look at all future projections in terms of where the market is going, it's just positive for anybody who's technically inclined. Even in the age of AI, anybody who tells you that AI is going to replace coders and all this kind of stuff, they, you can almost be certain that they're not professional developers. They're not. Because anybody who knows anything about writing code and development, that the coding part of it, the actual writing of the code, the boilerplate code, which the AI can do, and I encourage you to use it to do that, it's just a part of the process. It's just a part of the process. You know, especially in uh, small SMB, small, medium-sized business development, where as a developer, as a coder, you're going to be wearing many hats. So one day you may be working on the front end and you may be doing some Python scripting to automate a server. Uh, then another day you may be installing a WordPress uh, install, et cetera, and so on. It just, your work is all over the place. And so, again, all this type of decision-making has to be done. What libraries to choose? What languages to choose? Uh, what hosting company? Do I use this hosting? Do I have to go to VPS? Or do I, do I need something like Azure, which you probably don't? Or shared hosting just enough? 
Uh, what are your requirements? Okay, uh, what do you need? What features do you want? These are all things that AI cannot do. AI can assist you, but cannot replace. So I'm just to end this aside with regards to AI, don't worry about it. Embrace it, use it, learn to use it. I have seen in the past technologies that had a far greater impact in terms of development than AI has to date. And I don't see AI having for a long time. The reason you hear about AI so much is because it, it, it affects many industries in a marginal way. So in aggregate, it's pretty powerful. So what do I mean by that? Well, you see AI affecting copywriters, affecting uh, robotics, it's affecting uh, accounting, it's affecting software development, it's affecting uh, video production, it's affecting all kinds of industries. But they're not replacing anybody yet, maybe copywriters to a certain extent. Um, there may be a few industries here and there that might be re where people will be replaced or be great reduction in number of people required. I'm not too concerned about that, especially when it comes to software development. I say that AI is now making you 10 to 20% more productive as a software development, as a software developer, 10 to 20% more productive, depending on the type of specialization that you do. So I would be using AI to write my SQL queries because those can be a pain in the butt, but an AI to maybe do the boilerplate code for some layouts, but we've had templates for years. As I said, I've seen other technologies that predate AI that had a far, 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 far greater impact <laughs> than AI. Uh, number one, page-based web development paradigm shift. This is something that happened in the mid to late 90s. They went from code-centric front-end design to page-based, we're talking ASP Classic, ASP, JSPs, etc. This is a total change, and it was a big game-changer in terms of developer productivity. I was one of the first in the world to adopt ASP, it was now called ASP Classic, and I've told this story before. I took a, an early social media app that another company spent over a year building with the traditional way of doing things, Pearl CGI-based development, which was code-centric. I won't get into the details because this is old news, it's history. Anyway, ASP, this new paradigm, page-based paradigm, what Microsoft invented, by the way, was so productive that I was able to rebuild this social media platform, which was pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive. The previous company took over a year to build their prototype. I was able to build it from scratch using ASP technology in 30 days. And not because I was a great programmer, it's just because the page-based paradigm, replacing the old paradigm, was literally made me a thousand times more productive, 10 times more productive, right? And, well, more than that, actually. It took them a year, it took me 30 days. Now, of course, it's easier to copy and reproduce an app, but still, you see how hyper-productive that was. Another example I like to cite is WordPress. Before WordPress, all the magazine sites were done with HTML, maybe with uh, client-side includes with apps like Dreamweaver, um, with PHP or JSP type of includes, includes to reproduce like consistent items across the site, but it was manual essentially. So in comes the content management systems. I remember them coming in in 95, 96. And I remember at the time, all the HTML web designers, all the web designers, I was gonna say HTML nerds, but all the web designers at the time were freaking out. That's the end of web design and development with content management systems. Ah. They were wrong. It just changed the game. It shifted uh, what we did and how we did it. And I welcome all these changes. And I will say, that the move from static site development magazine type or information site development to using content management systems like a WordPress or a Drupal or Joomla or several others, that was a much, much bigger change to the web development uh, landscape than AI has been or AI will be for the foreseeable future. So to conclude, yes, right now there might be a reduction of jobs because they're just cleaning house, as I said, and uh, they're not hiring people from bad boot camps or from uh, you know people who just learn on their own with uh, no guidance and uh, Udemy courses and stuff. 
That's just normal. So what you have to do, if you're learning this stuff, is I always tell people the same thing over and over again. Like in my, my own mentoring program, learn your fundamentals well. Start building real sites for people. Start taking on freelance contracts. Even do two, or two to three for free to get your hands dirty. Because when you build an actual project, your understanding of development will just skyrocket. It will just to the moon. It will just go like you'll be amazed at how much more you're going to learn. So, yeah, problem is a lot of people have imposter syndrome. A lot of people are nervous about jumping into the market. The great thing about coding, by the way, unlike other industries like the print industry, if you make a mistake, eh, no big deal. You fix it. That's why we have iOS, what are we at, 14 now, 0 0.10456, whatever it is. All those points, those are subversions of the software. Why do you have that? Coder mistakes, developer error. So don't sweat making bugs in uh, your coding. That's why you take on little projects for free. Nobody's heavily invested, but you're learning a lot. And uh, you're gonna, that's how you're going to build your resume. That's how you're going to get a job. Not by doing endless tutorials. I, I could put out all kinds of tutorials and sell them, but that's not good for you. I have my base stuff that I, I teach, the fundamentals, and you head out there and you start building the real thing. Just like a boxer, a fighter, an MMA fighter, and, or a boxer, how do they get good? They get in the ring, they fight. All right, I'm Michael Steph. I hope you found this video useful. If you don't like my video, give me two thumbs down. Not one, but give me two, show me how much you hate me. If you think my hair is too long, give me two thumbs down. And uh, last piece of advice, just avoid Ruby. Just avoid Ruby. Thank you.